You, you, you've mentioned a few things. You mentioned um, candida and you mentioned the adrenals. Yeah. What are some of the other specific imbalances or specific areas that, that you find effective in, in treatment? Yeah, um, I'll mention a few and then we can go into detail with one or two that are, um, are very significant. We sort of mentioned adrenals uh, is one that uh, an area we look at. The thyroid can be a significant area again. Again, it's where you're looking at the thyroid, you're looking for suboptimal imbalances, not not so that a thyroid is so far gone that it's hit the reference ranges where the medical profession would say you've got low thyroid. We're talking about a low thyroid due to even just nutritional deficiencies and things like iodine and selenium. Um, so there's other uh, parts of the endocrine system that we look at, low growth hormones, some of the sex hormones as well, levels that are out of balance, suboptimal. Um, other areas that we look at are uh, digestion is a hugely important area because we've got so step one is making sure people are absorbing the diet and the, and the supplements and everything else that we're recommending. So that's, it becomes a huge important area. The, the digestion is also hugely important because about 80 percent of the immune system cells are found in the gut. So if there is imbalances there. Uh, it's going to have an, an impact on the entire body. And you can't fix chronic, some chronic low-grade bacterial and viral infections while the gut isn't sorted out. And allergies are another huge whole complication part of this as well, intolerances and food allergies. I spend a lot of time looking into those areas. Um, you, you mentioned the gut, maybe just go into a little bit more detail around some of that, that some of the symptoms that can be caused and you know some of the different... Well, kind of, kind everything of in the body is connected. Yeah, it's, it's doing because yeah. everything in the body is connected. So if you've got malabsorption happening, so you've got pancreatic enzyme deficiencies, maybe low stomach acids, you're not breaking down your food properly and you're not absorbing your vitamins and minerals properly, well, that's going to hit every system, in the, mm. could hit an impact on every system in the body. And I suppose someone could be eating the best organic food there is, yeah. but if, the, if there's no absorption of it, then... Yeah, it's another reason why confusion around you know taking supplements and... Uh, you know, step one for us is when we are we going to recommend supplements. The step one is can they absorb them at the moment? And so the gut work's very important. That and picking up infections, parasitic uh, overgrowth, candida and yeast overgrowth, um, C. difficile is coming up a lot in patients at the moment, and that's reflecting some of the overuse of antibiotics in the last 20, 30 years, and what's going on in hospitals at the moment. Um, so quite a lot of the big sort of the bad microbes and some of the, the, the parasites and so on, which can lead on to a thing called leaky gut, which is um, where the joints, the cells in the gut lining have got gaps that are too wide between them and that causes problems like food intolerances and so on. So it's, it, there are some patients where pretty much problems in the gut was the originating underlying predisposing factor, which is how it led on to uh, the illness developing into chronic fatigue. So a hugely important area. Um, it's, it links in with the immune system as well. We know, we definitely know that there are chronic low-grade viral and bacterial infections that are systemic going on as well that miss, go below the, the radar again. Those kind of things can be actually a key in some cases to making a difference. To, you can sort out somebody's adrenals, sort out their thyroid, sort out their gut, but if you don't clear the, the, the low-grade infections, the patient doesn't feel any different. So, so it's, it's really difficult patients, yeah. you know, to keep patients on board with this. And, um, and also what you're referring to, maybe, maybe we'll come back to a little bit later, yeah. is also you're referring to different subgroups. There are some people, like yeah. in what you're saying, that you could just treat the gut and that would be enough. And other yeah. people, you'd treat the gut and you'd resolve that and nothing would, would happen beyond that. Yeah. The other, the other very interesting area um, that's, that's had a big impact, I'd say, in the last four or five years is also something called mitochondrial function. Um, that is, uh, it's one of the, it's a really, it's been a real key part of the picture, part, part of the picture to understand. It's not the be-all and end-all, it's not the final answer. You can't pare it down and say ME is mitochondrial malfunction. There are reasons about why that went out in the first place and then there were secondary damages to stuff that happened because the mitochondria isn't working 100%. But in terms of, I'll just explain what that is and why we, it's an important part of the illness. Um, the body, you've got between 50 to 100 trillion cells in the human body. Wow. Yep, 50 <laughs> okay. to 100 trillion. And practically every single one of these uh, the cells in the body has a little part in it, a little suborganelle called mitochondria. And that bit of the cell is the bit that is responsible for producing uh, any, the energy of the cell so that the cell can do its job. So it's got the energy to create proteins, to, um, to do its biological functioning. Um, now, it's, 
uh, mitochondrial function. It's a bit like I've always used the analogy of a car engine. So it's constantly recycling on and on, recycle, recycle, recycle. The thing that it produces is, is this thing, I'm not going to go into detail because it's too technical, but it's something called ATP, which is the energy currency of the body. It's throughout the animal kingdom. It's uh, ATP is um, what the body uses to do the jobs that it needs to do. ATP is then sent back into the mitochondria where it's rejuvenated, so it's constantly recycled. So we literally have like a, a, this circular recycling process. Now, if you think about chronic fatigue syndrome, you could pretty much say mitochondrial malfunction is probably the biological basis of poor stamina. So suddenly we have um, an understanding about when ME patients talk about um, suddenly they, they will tell you ex experiences like uh, suddenly, somebody just pulled the plug on me somebody just pulled the plug I just couldn't suddenly I had to just um, go and just uh, go to bed and, and get sleep and so on so it's like they're feeling that their energy is, is kind of okay it's okay it's okay and then suddenly it's just gone it's disappeared and I think uh, or, or the other me... thing is delayed fatigue yes. so it's where they, they will do an activity and it might even be fine the next day or the day after but then three days later absolutely uh, exhausted and wiped out and having to, to go and retire. Which can be very confusing to the patient, obviously, yes. because they, they've done that thing three days ago and they seem to be fine, yeah. and then suddenly just the energy's gone. Yeah, so we can pr we pretty much we can explain that for, for what is going on biologically in the body, and, and I sp we do spend time with patients explaining that to them what's actually going on, because we have this recycling process going on in the mitochondria, and when... When the mitochondria are under-functioning, which can be due to toxicity, interference going on, a shortage of raw materials that the mitochondria need for energy production, what happens is that the, the reserves and the speed of that production of the ATP is under-functioning. So a, a, a certain amount of activity will use up the reserves more quickly than a purely healthy person. So suddenly the mitochondria have, have run out, basically I'm simplifying this, but running running out of the uh, the ATP. So that is the experience. The ATP's gone, that's kind of the experience of being like the 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 um, somebody's unplugged your energy system. And that is literally that was you had low reserves. And if you put more demand on the physical body than the mitochondria has uh, is able to keep up with and can produce, that's the experience of somebody um, pulling the plug. I don't want to get too technical because we get really biochemical and it's, that's not really useful, but the delayed fatigue, the body, when you put too much demand on the mitochondria, it tries to keep up. It's trying to serve you. You're putting too much demand. ATP gets broken down to a different molecule and something called ADP. And then if you keep going and the demand on your body is going, 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 that ADP is then broken down and lost to the body. The energy is literally lost to the body. That's why if you if that happens, if you've put so much demand on the body, you will literally, it will take, the body has to recycle, create the raw materials from scratch. And that can take, that's when people say they've crashed and it can take sometimes days, weeks, sometimes months to recover because ATP should be constantly recycled. ADP, ATP, ADP, ATP. But then if you put too much demand, you'll literally, you can wipe your ADP out and then there's complications, things that happen and you can literally, the body can't, is sort of making everything from scratch and that's why it can take quite a while. It's, it's, it's a bit technical, but it, it's, um, it really helps patients understand what's going on with that. It also helps them understand about why they need the rest period. I, from my experience, the power of the understanding of that with the patient is that they just they calm down and they stop worrying about things so much. And they also they understand, because they, they've learned what's going on in the body, they know, what, for example, when they've crashed, they know it's fine and they know that the body's just going to need some time to recycle and re rebuild the energy reserves again. So they can just do what their body needs them to do and they don't worry and think this is going to be forever or, or that kind of thing. So that's made a huge difference.